the vlog. So today's vlog is going to be all about NICE guidelines, which was requested by someone because I understand it's very, very confusing for a lot of people to get their head around the website and everything. So I'm hopefully going to give you some tips or something about NICE guidelines that's hopefully going to help you. So firstly, what does NICE stand for? So NICE stands for the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence. And this is an organisation that is run by a load of professionals. And what they do is they um, basically they want to improve the outcomes for people in within the NHS and the public health and social care services and things like that. So what they do is they produce evidence based guidance. So they have gone out, they've done the research, they've got all of the evidence behind them to produce a guideline. So, for example, for hypertension, they've looked at all of the evidence to see what works for hypertension, what doesn't work and they've produced a set protocol slash guidance to follow out there in clinics for us. So they produce our guidelines, protocols, quality standards, uh, performance metrics, all that sort of thing to anyone that works in healthcare, public services and social services. And these guidelines are really our gold standards. This is what we use to justify our reasoning behind why we're doing something. So if I've got a patient that's come in for their blood pressure and I've followed all of the guidance, I've done everything I can, then I'm covered. I can justify my actions. I've gone by evidence-based research because I've followed the NICE guidelines and all of that jazz. So it's just a way that covers yourself as well, because as healthcare professionals, we are following evidence-based practice to get better outcomes for our patients. That's just the way we do things. Now, searching the website can be horrific. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I have looked up a few things and I can't find certain things. So I've had to email them and just say, listen, I'm looking for a specific set of guidelines for something. Any dangers of just pointing me in the right direction and show me where I'm going wrong. So please don't worry if you can't find something that are helpful, useful numbers that's on the website as well. Just go to the contact section on the NICE website and send them an email if you can't find something. So this page right here is your main NICE page. When you Google NICE guidelines, this is your main page, okay? And then at the top, you've got uh, guidance. So if you click that, it's got all different topics that you can search for, health protection, population groups, anything you want to look for basically under those sort of topics. You've got nice pathways up the top. So look for different pathways that you want to find. So again, I'm using hypertension because it's the easiest one to explain. Um, so just have a look at that. So I'm clicking on hypertension here and then it should come up somewhere. Oh, here you go. Hypertension. There you go. And that just shows you your pathway for hypertension. And then it's got all of these links that you can click on as well. And then it'll take you to a different um, a different page, a different uh, pathway, if you if you if you like, and then along the side here, it's got all the different managing treatment, hypertension, and pregnancy, which I've just clicked on. Um, but that's just that's quite an easy way to do it, to be honest. Um, otherwise, there's at the top as well. There's different quality standards you can look for, life science. So I haven't used any of these, to be honest. The BNF, da -da -da, we love the BNFs um what's this one oh bnf for children obviously <laughs> bnfc uh cks what is cks i don't know what cks stands for about cks here you go let's click on that oh clinical knowledge of clinical knowledge summaries okay cks i didn't know that um anyway so let's go back to the main page so you've got your main home page if you just want to quick search something uh, you can literally just type it in the top. So again, I'm going to use um, hypertension because it's easy. Click in hypertension and then you'll get a whole load of results, 384 results. But on the left hand side, you can cut it down. So if you go on guidance, pathways, whatever you're looking for, you can cut it down on the left hand side there. Um, but I'm looking, I normally do diagnosis and management. That's the one I'm mainly aiming for because in clinic, I want to know how to manage my hypertensive patients. Um, and it's got tools and resources on this page. So, um, all these different assessment tools and things like that, that you can go on. It is quite a lot of information. So don't worry about that too much right now. Just remember your nice homepage, search whatever topic you want to search for. 
um, and just go go from there. So down here, it's got diagnosing, starting treatment. We don't need that because we don't diagnose and we're not starting treatment. So for me, it's monitoring treatment and blood pressure targets. That's my main area of concern. So this shows you all of the recommendations for people with hypertension, what your targets should be, but also it factors in the different uh, conditions as well. So if someone's got diabetes, uh, for example, they're gonna have different targets to just a regular healthy person that's got hypertension, if that makes sense. Um, and this just shows you what you should be doing. It, this is the gold standard, evidence-based practice, what you should be doing in clinic. It's quite a lot of information. There's lots of different links and lots of different guidelines included. Um, so it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes looking on these nice guideline pages. But once you get your head around it, and I think that's the main thing with nice guidelines, get your head around it and keep practicing, keep searching. Don't just look at it and think, I can't do this and just click off and switch off because we have to follow nice guidelines, whether you like it or not. It's what we have to do, unfortunately. So yeah, so just getting your head around the website, just practice. You can't go wrong, whatever you click on or whatever, you know, you're not going to suddenly set off some sort of crazy internet explosion or do something crazy so don't worry too much just get used to this website um and you'll be well away honestly it, it is just just practicing and taking the time to get used to the uh, website and the ways of doing things sorry i've got like a tag on my t-shirt and it's itching my back so sorry about that um what else another really good thing that's on here that i want to point out is decision aids so again, if you go onto the page that you want, you go up, you search hypertension, for example, or diabetes, asthma. Asthma is a really good one as well. Um, have a look at the decision aids. The decision aids are here. So this is what you'll sit in front of your patient with. And, and it brings up things like this. So how do you control your blood pressure as a patient? So this is a really good decision aid. So it shows you what it is, what does the blood pressure mean? It then says, okay, what are my options? What can I do about my blood pressure? So it'll give you all of these different options. Um, and then have a look at this table. That There's normally a table that says, okay, what does this do? Why does it do it? How is it going to help? What are the advantages? All that jazz. Hopefully it's going to persuade your patient to do something about their health. Um, and then it's got different things like medicines that will come up as well. Same with asthma. It's got all the different um, different inhalers and things like that that they can take. And there's a different sort of decision aid for that. And it depends on very much whether like some people have got arthritis in the hand, so whether they can push down on, on the device. So what device are they going to have? Little things like that. It's just really good for this sort of stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so this table is really, really good as well. So it's got all these different choices, what, what happens. And then it shows you all the chances of side effects. This is really, really good to sit down with your patient. Obviously, you have to have the time as well to do this and make sure they're giving you time in clinics as well. So this is just showing you side effects and things like that in a table. It's just it's really, really good. It really helps your patient understand the condition as well. So use it and abuse it for your patient. So now I'm just going to show you a different condition. So we're going to go back to our nice page. We're going to search asthma just to show you asthma because that's another easy one. Click asthma. And then once you click into any asthma thing, it'll come up guidance it's got the pathways again it's got all of this nice guidelines anything you want to um search basically on asthma so new in the last six months what have we got this shows you um more the evidence side of things so when you look at, at this sort of guidance and stuff like that it goes into different conditions and different treatments and different managements and things like that so it can be a bit confusing when you click on this sort of page because you're like I don't know what I'm trying to look for, but if you just start with the basics, asthma, I click onto this one, so the asthma, diagnosing, monitoring uh, and management of asthma. Obviously, I'm not going to be diagnosing. I'm not uh, a nurse prescriber. I'm not advanced with nurse practitioner, anything like that. I'm not going to be dealing with any of that. So mine is just monitoring and management of asthma. That's what I want to know. Oh, this is a really weird page. Okay, ignore everything I've just said. Ignore that. <laughs> I'm going to go up top here because that's a really weird page. Asthma. I'm going to click on this. Diagnosing, monitoring, asthma. There you go. That should bring up the page now. There you go. Thank you. So this is the page that we wanted. And this is where nice guidelines get confusing because there's so many different pages. But you literally just keep searching for what you need.
So again, for me, for asthma, um, I can look at the initial assessment because that's what we do as nurses as well. We can assess it, but we're not putting a diagnosis on it. We're just taking all of the history, all of the symptoms, things like that, to be able to think, okay, this could potentially be asthma. And then you co, um, co I don't know what I was going to say. Then you li li liaise with your doctor or GP or your advanced nurse practitioner and say, listen, this is what I found from this patient. I think they've got asthma. What do you think? And you work together to be able to get that diagnosis. And then the advanced nurse practitioner or the doctor will then give that official diagnosis. You don't do that because we don't do that as nurses. So this one, again, uh, initial assessment, you want to take the history, like I said, physical examination, which I can't do as a nurse, but again, the advanced nurse practitioner can and the doctor can, so they'll do like chest examinations and that sort of thing to listen for a wheeze in the lungs. Um, physical examination as well. So then again, monitoring asthma. So this is what we're doing in the asthma review. So it's shown you step by step what they need. And uh, they come up with these list of things that we should be doing to help prevent um, like an asthma attack from happening. It's not always going to be the case. You won't always prevent an asthma attack. But just by all of the research and the evidence that they've found, putting these things in place can really, really make a massive difference to somebody's asthma and control. So it's getting that control for the patient. Um, so these are all different things. So they've got the asthma control questionnaire. If you Google ACT uh, asthma, it will come up and you'll see the sort of questions that they ask on that. This is really, really good um, to gauge sort of your patient's symptoms and stuff like that. Then you've got all these different doses. So again, we're not doing uh, inhaler dosing or anything like that. It's down to the doctor to prescribe and then uncontrolled asthma and suspected and all that. There's absolutely loads. I could spend all day going through all of these gui the, all these uh, guidelines, um, but it's literally, once you get your head around it, it's not too bad. Sometimes you end up on pages and you're just like, I have no idea how I've, I've, I've ended up on here, but literally just go back to the start, click back to the start, main page, and just search, or just go onto Nice Pathways, like I said, and just look for the particular topic that you want down on this little table here. Really, really good. Yes, so I, I hope that's been some sort of help on Nice Guidelines. I'm sorry it's not really in-depth or anything like that, but literally... You, again, you just need to practice. You need to just get your head around the website. That is the main bit. And just keep clicking on links. Like if you're not finding your link, just have another go. So I hope that's helped in some way with nice guidance. If there's anything else you want to know, uh, just drop a comment below. I will try and answer it. But again, I'm not 100% the best at nice guidelines myself. But things like hypertension, diabetes, asthma, the standard things are always there clear as day 101 different things for it um, it's just searching through the different links and stuff like that to find what you actually need which can be tricky but like I said just keep going at it keep practicing and hopefully you'll get there so thank you so much everyone for taking the time out to watch this I hope it's been a benefit and I hope you have an amazing week hey!